Okay, folks, we're back in the shop, and today, as promised, uh, you know, my buddy Dave threw the gauntlet down and said, dude, you got to start focusing on the, uh, on the M37. Well, a GPW came along, and I was like, squirrel? Ooh, something shiny. <laughs> I'm addicted! Anyways, um, no, I just, I had, I did what I had to do to get it. It's here. It's part. It's out of the weather. And now we're going to get back onto the M37 and start doing some stuff. And this stuff is removing valve guides. Okay? And I'm not going to do them all for the camera. I'm only going to demonstrate one so you can see what I'm doing. But this is a new uh, replacement guide. Um, this one here is an exhaust. Actually, they look the same, but the internal... Uh, uh, the diameter inside here is just a hair difference. And so you'll notice that all your exhaust valves only fit exhaust guides, which will probably have to be reamed anyways. So I came out here in the shop today and I thought, well, I'm going to try one first uh, so I don't act like a fool. And uh, But I, do, I did act like a fool. Uh, I made a mistake and I want to show you what I did first and what not to do, okay? And uh, I've been getting guidance from so many different people on how to do this, and they all have different methods that work. But I'm a simple man with some simple tools. Anyways, I ordered a six-piece extra-long air hammer drift set uh, online, okay? One of them Amazon deals. And the drifts, they kind of look like that, right? For an air hammer. And the one that I that I have for this one here is a, uh, I modified, and I'll show you what I did. So I'm like, cool. I got this dude out. I put it on there. Hooked it to the air hammer. Rat -tat 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 -tat. And the head of the valve shattered. And most of the valves that are in this block right now, they do have some funky chips and, you know, burned away or whatever. But it just, it, it just, it, it kept going. It felt like it was going and pushing, but what it was doing, it was actually spreading the metal and shattering it because of that little arc. And after I, I knew exactly what had happened, and I was like, damn it, that's got to be perfectly square. And I don't have a lathe to cut that notch so I have a nice square fit. So what I did is I took it over to the bench grinder and I took away as much as I could of, of that arc. And went over to the bench, two washers, welded it on. And now I have a flat location, right? That I can use to drive the, uh, the guides out. So basically, I modified this 5 16 piece, and uh, I got a nice flat surface now where I can put all the pressure on the lip and not cause any damage. So yeah, the first time was like, you know, I was excited, and I went in there, and I didn't do any damage to the block. But what's interesting is that the manual says to drive them halfway through and then snap them in half using a, um, uh, you know, a nice solid drift, or you can use... Um, I used a regular cold chisel. Okay, most of you guys have that. And what happened was, I didn't realize how brittle these things are because I was really spooked about, you know, really, you want me to go in there and snap one in half? What about the block? Am I going to damage the block? It took hardly any pressure at all, and it snapped this dude right in half. Boom. Okay, why do you need to do that? Because if you're going to leave the cam in there along with the lifters uh, and the adjusters, you just don't have room to get that valve all the way out and tipped out, all right? So, you drive it about halfway through. In this case, I got a little bit more than that. I tapped it, and you can see where I hit it with that cold chisel, and, it's, and it broke this thing off like freaking crackers, man. And um, so I was like really impressed with that. I said, well, geez, I can do this. I, now I can go through and, uh, and bust all these out of there and install them. So, looking at the valves, <clears throat> The, uh, the, the tapered end of the valve, uh, there is an orientation issue. Some guys are saying, oh, no, the tape, all the tapers go to the top, uh, but not in this case. This motor, all the intake valves, the tapers towards the top. The exhaust valve, the tapers towards the bottom. 
even though that the height of this is still the same height as the from here to here on the top of the head or the uh, block, right? And I got to look at the measurements at seven sixteenths or something, um, but I'll have to figure that out when I do. And I go back to install these things on the tool that I used to install with. We'll go ahead and measure from this edge up, and I'll scribe the depth that I need. So when I drive it down, I just don't go past the uh, past, past the block. Um, now I got some friends out there in the MVPA community that have messed with these things before. I know Jeff Matson's done this stuff on his L134. Um, Paul Ray, I'd imagine, has done this on some of the big trucks that he's working on. And, uh, you know, these guys are full of good information. And Jeff might get mad at me on this one because I did not take the block off the stand. I mean, the stand I have is pretty stout, and uh, the block doesn't move that much, and it takes a hit pretty good. Uh, as demonstrated here. So um, let's go to the motor. Let me show you what I did and how I got this dude out of there. Yeah, this is strange, but it's cool. Just to give you a quick example of a jacked up guide when you go to drive it. See that in there? But where it's busted, the, uh, the head of that guide was kind of chewed up and it was not square so when you go in there you may shatter it get you a magnet and pick up the pieces all right uh so that one's going to take a little bit of work to get out but let's go ahead and uh let's break this i'll show you how simple it is we're going to drive it the rest of the way out and that'll be that all right you need a bfh for this job if you don't know what that is that's a big freaking hammer. <laughs> All right. That's simple. Didn't hardly take any any force or effort. <clears throat> the other half and it falls to the floor he shoots he scores okay so good deal <clears throat> because i'm paranoid i'm going to come back in afterwards and i'm just going to take this little magnet pick up any uh any loose guys i have in there okay there's not much and I, I, what i should do is just really cover this with a freaking rag be done with it but okay, we'll rotate the the uh, we'll rotate the crank. So these cam lobes drop. We we'll drop these lifters and go for the next ones. Well, that's pretty much it. Nothing too exciting, but uh, you know, we'll get working on the rest of them and stuff. I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. Here's the one we just took out. Interesting. Look at the spiral uh, markings on that. I mean, certainly they didn't whisk these in but uh pretty cool all right looking forward to getting these all out and i'll try to document putting the new ones in never done it before so hey you know i gotta try it at least once so if i jack it up then i'll get some help uh, i appreciate your comments and uh let me know how you do things differently I can't afford to put a hydraulic press on it. I know they make something that I could probably mount to the top of the block and just press those dudes out of there. But I do want to be cautious installing the new ones. I don't want to jack that up. So have a good night. Thanks for watching. And I'll take a couple pictures. See ya.